Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology, and today we shall continue with our Vishnu Sastram playlist. I added the introductory video to Vishnu Sastram, and I had received a overwhelming positive response. So, thank you very much for all the beautiful things that you have said to me for starting this playlist. I didn't know that this was so much in demand, otherwise, I would have started it one or two years back. And there are so many questions which uh, some of you have asked me. So here you go. Today, finally, we start with the Vishnu Sastanam. And I will explain also the uh, invocations and the different uh, things which are there, including every shluk. I'll try to explain every word also, but that may not be possible. But overall, I'll try to explain to best of my capacity. And before I start, there, there's one very important question which uh, somebody has asked me that uh, generally we know Yudhishthir Maharaj. So last time we saw Yudhishthir Maharaj is asking uh, these questions to Bhishma Pitama. Okay, so we'll go through them again. But the question is uh, Yudhishthir Maharaj is known as Dharmaraj and he is actually uh, the son of uh, Yamaraj and uh, Devi Kunti actually. He, I mean, officially he's the son of Pan, Pandu and Kunti, but he was uh, begotten through Niyok, which was a uh, which was a way by which uh, a devata would come and bless a lady who is already uh, the wife of somebody, uh, and by that uh, the devata's anch would be there, right? So that uh, that son or the daughter would be born. Uh, so in that case, he's Yamaraj himself because he, he Yamaraj is his father. So he he's like his Yamaraj, <laughs> and he's also Dharmaraj. So how in the universe does he ask such basic questions like uh, what is Dharma, which God should I worship, or what should I do? Why is he asking these questions to Bhishma Pitama? Why at all? Does he not know? And imagine. There's a senior like Vishma Pitama and he hears all these questions and he's like, oh, what the hell, man? Come on. Don't you know that? Bhishma should have chastised him, right? If Bhishma thought that he's just uh, mocking or playing around. But no, that's not what he does. In fact, Bhishma answers them profusely, very uh, patiently. Why, why, why? Because uh, Yudhishthir Maharaj, uh, you have to remember, he's not asking for himself. He's asking for people like you and me. <laughs> yes, that, that's uh, how great personalities are. They, they may ask certain questions, uh, but you have to always remember that it's not that they are asking for themselves. It's not that they are themselves in doubt. Okay, So Yudhishthir Maharaj is perfectly cognizant of who is God. He doesn't need to ask to Bhishma or to even Krishna or nobody. <laughs> And Bhishma is also 100% aware of the fact that Yudhishthir Maharaj knows all of these. But he's still asking for your and my uh, benefit. All right. So uh, whenever you are hearing the Vishnu Sasanam, you should always offer your obeisances first to two personalities. One to Maharishi Vyas and then to Yudhishthir Maharaj. Because, and of course, the third one is the one who spoke it, Bhishma Pitama. He's always there. But apart from Bhishma, I mean. Because uh, if these two would not be there, then especially if Yudhishthir would not ask these questions, you would not come to know about it. All right. So my obeisance is to this great personality, the eldest Pandav. <laughs> All right. So therefore, let's start with the invocation. Now, Bhishma Pitama speaks a thousand names, but before that also there are some slokas which lead to that. Okay. So that's like invocation. So that is like praying, paying respects to Lord Vishnu, paying respects to Vyasadeva, paying respects to Yudhishthir Maharaj. Okay. So generally the Vishnu Sastanam starts like this. Shuklam Varadharam Vishnum Shashi Varnam Chatur Bhujam Prasanna Vadaram Dhyayet Sarva Vigno Pashantayet. And yes, I am not a scholar of Sanskrit. So many of you may be listening to my Sanskrit and you may feel, oh, he's not pronouncing it correctly. So please excuse me. I am not 100% perfect. <laughs> In fact, I just know to read Sanskrit that I have not learned Sanskrit. I am not a scholar in Sanskrit. Okay. So what does this sloka refers to? Shuklam Varadharam Vishnu Shashi Varnam Chatur Bhujam. All right. 
Shuklam Baladharam, dressed in white, you are, O all pervading one. And glowing with the color of moon, Shashi Varnam. Shashi is the moon because Krishna also says in Bhagavad Gita, na, Nakshatranam Aham Shashi, that uh, among the nakshatras, I am the moon. And you know, uh, in uh, Vedic astrology, uh, the moon is the ruler of all the nakshatras. Okay. So, Nakshatranam Aham Shashi. So, here it is said. Shashi Varnam Chatur Bhujam. Shashi Varnam means Varnam means color. Okay, Varnam means many things actually. One of the other meanings of the word Varna is uh, qualities also. Okay, and Varna also means colors. That is why they say when difficult time comes, people show their true colors. Why? Do, why do they say colors? Because that is their qualities, right? So here. Uh, the word Shashi Varnam Chatur Bhujam. Shashi Varnam has two meanings. Okay, so uh, Shashi Varnam means one who looks like the moon and uh, one who is uh, one whose qualities are like the moon. So why why is uh, why is it compared? Why is Lord Vishnu compared to the moon? So this shloka is referring to Lord Vishnu. Why is he compared to the moon? Because uh, because if you see in the sky, there are stars, yes, there are hundreds and thousands and millions of stars. Stars means those which, which are twinkling, okay. Uh, ignoring all the scientific details, what is a star according to science, what is a planet and all this, forget all this. But just think you are sitting in the night and there's a clear sky and the stars are twinkling. But then there is one moon which you see, all right. So therefore, he is like that moon. So there are many stars, all right. There are many stars mean shining objects, which means there are, uh, in this world also you will see there are many attractive people, many rich people, or uh, even in, if you go in the higher planetary systems, you will also find uh, there are many great personalities. Mm -hmm. uh, but he is like the moon. He is distinct. He is unique. He is special. There is nobody who is uh, who is like him. So there is nothing like the moon in the night. The moon is very distinct, clear, and visible, like the full moon. <laughs> All right. So therefore, he is considered. Uh, he he is compared to the moon. Shashi Varna means he looks like the moon. And uh, the other meaning is uh, Shashi Varna means he. His qualities are also like the moon, like the moon always reflects light. Okay, so he's also considered to be the sun and the moon both actually. All right, so but in this shloka, he's referred to the moon because just like the moon reflects all the light, he also reflects all the light. He is the one who gives light to everybody. All right, he reflects, he, he's the sun also. He gives and he reflects, he does both. All right, so therefore. It said, uh, Shuklam Varadharam Vishnu Shashi Varnam Chatur Bhujam. Chatur Bhujam, what is the meaning of the word Chatur Bhujam? Chatur Bhujam means, Chatur means four, Bhuja means hands. So, dressed in white. So, Shuklam Varadharam Vishnu. So, uh, there are many uh, different uh, things uh, when it comes to the dress which Lord Vishnu wears. So, generally they say uh, his color is uh, Shyama. Shyama means the like Lord Krishna's color. That is also Shyam. So, Vishnu's color is also a bit similar. It is the uh, cloud which is about to rain. Okay, the dark monsoon cloud. It's like that. So, that's why he's known as a Shyam Varna. All right. And uh, Krishna and Vishnu are a bit similar. Uh, in context of that color and uh, Lord Ram his appearance is green okay so Lord Ram uh, he was green in color okay and Balram is uh, different Balram is white okay so Krishna is somewhat blue Balram is white <laughs> and Vishnu is like uh, the color of the cloud actually okay and Krishna also and uh, Krishna's dhoti, the dhoti which he wears is Pitambari. Okay, Pitambari dhoti. It's a bit like golden actually. Not exactly, but you can search in Google Pitambari color. Then you will see. Okay. So uh, Vishnu also wears Pitambar dhoti. Okay. Sometimes he also wears this white. So therefore it is a Chuklam Vardharam Vishnu. Shashi Varnam Chatur Bhujam. Four hands. He has four hands. Okay. So... Now, what does he hold in his four hands? He, ha he has the Shankha Chakra Gada Padma. Shankha means the conch. Okay. 
So what does the conch signify? Now, there are many interpretations of this. Uh, we can keep discussing this for hours. Okay, what does these four things signify? <laughs> uh, but in short, uh, the conch, uh, conch signifies all the knowledge and all auspiciousness in this world. Okay, so uh, generally what happens when we read scriptures, we just read it. So many of you would have read this shloka a million times, right? Chuklam Varadharam Vishnum Shashi Varnam Chatur Bhujam. But do you know how much meaning is there inside this? Okay. So maybe today's video will go to this shloka only. <laughs> so therefore we should not, we should never rush because we should understand why. What, what is this Chatur Bhujam? Why? Why? What are there? What are the things which Vishnu holds? So what, what is the importance of the conch? The conch signifies uh, all, all the knowledge of this world, it signifies all auspiciousness actually. Okay, why do I say this? Because if you read the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is uh, the, the crest jewel of all the Vedic literatures compiled by Vyasdi at the highest level of his maturity, you will see uh, there's this story of Dhruva Maharaj. Dhruva Maharaj was a five year old boy. He did penance for six months and then Lord Vishnu appeared in front of him and he wanted a kingdom greater than Lord Brahma, okay, who is his great grandfather. And that time, Dhruva Maharaj is not able to uh, speak anything because he's completely choked because he has seen Lord Vishnu and now he's unable to speak anything out of his ecstasy, out of his trance, out of the happiness which he is feeling. And then what does Lord Vishnu do? He takes his conch and he touches it to the head of Dhruva Maharaj. So the moment Dhruva Maharaj uh, gets the touch of this conch in his head, all the knowledge of the Vedas, the Upanishads, the Puranas, all the Shrutis, the Smritis, the Sutras and Yantras and Tantras and Mudras and Mantras and all the different the uh, systems of philosophy of this world, all the knowledge of the entire universe descends upon Dhruva Maharaj and then he speaks the most beautiful poetry. Okay, so any of you, if you have been uh, facing difficulty, you know, if you feel that you don't have knowledge, you lack clarity in life or uh, you, you are confused about what you should do in life, then you should always, always, always meditate upon Lord Vishnu and the conch. Okay, so you should also imagine and meditate and you should read the story of Dhruva Maharaj. Just go to Google and type Dhruva Maharaj Srimad Bhagavatam. You will find the story. Okay, so you should pray to him that just like you had blessed Dhruva Maharaj by touching your conch to his head and then he got all the knowledge of this world. So if you also feel that you also need knowledge in certain area of life, it can be anything, science, physics, politics, or creativity, or jyotish, or spirituality, any, any area of life, not only spiritual topics, you can always meditate upon Lord Vishnu placing the conch on the head, in, on Dhruva Maharaj's head, right? And therefore, if you do that, you will see that very soon, all the knowledge that you require descends upon you, all right? So that is the first thing which he holds in his hands, okay? Four, four hands he has. So one is the Shankha, which is the conch. So the conch also represents, uh, so they say when they blow the conch, okay? This kind of a sound comes for the Westerners. So if you have not seen, uh, they generally blow this in the temples, okay? Whenever the... God's altar is supposed to open, then they blow the conch. Why do they blow the conch? Because uh, the conch is considered to be very auspicious and very pure. And therefore, when they blow the conch, all the inauspicious energies uh, till the place where the sound of the conch goes, all the ghosts and uh, these and, and these creatures who have subtle bodies, but they torment. Uh, humans or animals have you heard of these stories you know ghosts coming to you know uh, attack somebody and get inside their body and make them do what they want okay so that is like uh, ghosts have a subtle body but they don't have a gross body so they can enter your gross body if you are uh, if you are not very spiritually awakened or if you are very much disconnected from your body okay so to to the uh, to whichever place the sound of the conch goes you know, to that extent, 
these ghosts they cannot stay there they just disappear and all the negativity you know if, if, even if you go and blow it in a graveyard or a smashan or a kabristan which is considered very inauspicious but if you go and blow it there even there it is considered very auspicious okay so there is actually nothing no negativity which can stay so therefore uh, in india especially in the vedic culture they used to always blow the conch three times every day in the morning and in the afternoon and in the evening especially in the evening okay so morning was for uh, inviting auspiciousness to the home and afternoon was to maintain the auspiciousness and the evening was to drive because evening time is most dangerous okay because these ghosts and these demons and these uh, rakshasas daityas they they are roaming uh, during the evening time okay so therefore evening uh, you may you should make it a point that if you have conch at your home then please blow it three times in the evening okay around sunset just before sunset okay so that you uh, get protection from the divine energy okay so if you blow the conch then no negativity can touch you okay so that is the uh, conch shankha so that represents two things auspiciousness and uh, knowledge then uh, then we have the shankha chakra chakra is the sudarshan chakra which lord vishnu has okay it's like a it's like a disc compact disc cd dvd <laughs> is is just that it's much more powerful than a normal cd or a dvd and it is made of uh, hundreds and thousands and millions of spikes okay so the shrimad bhagavatam has detailed description about the sudarshan chakra and uh, i will not go into details because that will take a long time but the sudarshan chakra is uh, it is the source energy of all the weapons that is there in this entire universe sudarshan chakra is the it is the epitome and the emblem of protection from any evil forces okay and uh, the sudarshan chakra cannot be nullified by any weapon because that is the source of all the weapons that you know and you know, whichever weapon you know it is either it's the weapon of the lokpalas or shiva or whichever or indra whoever that personality is that is the source of all the weapons okay so therefore if any time you feel that you lack protection in your life especially if you uh, that's not only uh, physical protection it is also uh, it can be also subtle protection okay if you feel insecure suppose you are in a relationship or you are married but due to some reason you feel insecure for any reason or you are insecure as a son as a daughter or as a mother as a father as a husband or wife or as anybody then you can always pray to the sudarshan chakra the sudarshan chakra will always protect you and if you chant the vishnu sahasranam every day they say the sudarshan chakra is already protecting you always okay so no inauspiciousness can come to you and now this does not mean that by dint of karma if you have some suffering and if you keep praying to the sudarshan chakra and the suffering will not come no that suffering will come but if you pray to the sudarshan chakra the sudarshan chakra will empower you to deal uh, deal necessarily with that suffering okay and by that you will realize that you can come out of that suffering <clears throat> so therefore and sudarshan chakra is also the one which is the source of all strength of this universe all the power that you see in this world is coming from the sudarshan chakra actually okay so therefore if you feel that you need strength then you must pray to the sudarshan chakra you need bodily strength you need mental strength emotional strength spiritual strength to carry on anything you need strength to carry on your married life or to maintain your children or to maintain your husband wife whoever that person is mother father anybody mentally or physically emotionally please pray to the sudarshan chakra the sudarshan chakra will always protect you and empower you okay it will always do that and there are mantras also for the sudarshan chakra which you can do but uh, that we can discuss some other time but in general you can always pray to the sudarshan chakra all right so therefore uh, that will give you all protection and power 
right? So, but anybody who misuses that power, uh, that Sudarshan Chakra will destroy that person. <laughs> All right. So, if you uh, if you have a lot of power and influence over people, you should also use it properly. Otherwise, that same Sudarshan Chakra will come and destroy you. All right. Shankha, Chakra, Gada. <laughs> gada is the mace. All right. So, Lord Vishnu also has the Gada with which he rips apart the demons. Okay. So, <clears throat> now, sometimes they ask a question that, uh, Vishnu is God, so why does he need two weapons? Yes, he, he, he can have the chakra and he can just uh, finish off all the demons, all the negativity with the chakra. Why does he need the gada? Why does he need the mace? Well, that is because he wants to assure to his devotees that even if my Sudarshan chakra fails to protect you, my gada will always protect you. Now, that cannot happen. That is not possible that the Sudarshan Chakra fails because it is the source of all the energies of the universe. How can, how, how can any weapon or any power destroy the Sudarshan Chakra? It's not possible because that strength comes from the Chakra. But, but still, let's imagine a hypothetical situation that the Sudarshan Chakra fails, which cannot happen. But even if you assume that it happens, then the Gada is always there to protect you. Okay, And this is what uh, Lord Vishnu had demonstrated uh, when he had protected uh, Parikshit Maharaj in the womb of Uttara. Parikshit Maharaj is grandson of Arjun and he is the son of Abhimanyu and Uttara. Okay, He was in the womb and Ashwatthama, the son of Dronacharya, had, had uh, disposed the Brahma Shira Astra to kill uh, Uttara's womb, which is Parikshit Maharaj, who is Parikshit, and he was there in the womb. And Lord Vishnu had expanded from the heart of Uttara to protect Parikshit Maharaj. And he was shielding the uh, Brahmashi Rastra with the Sudarshan Chakra, and he was also protecting him with the Gada. All right? So that is for assurance to his devotees that even if the Sudarshan Chakra fails, which can never happen, but you still have something else. <laughs> okay, and sometimes uh, he personally fights with demons and uh, then he also fights with his Gala sometimes. Okay, and uh, Sudarshan Chakra generally represents the source of all power you know, and Gada generally represents the application of the power. Okay, so uh, that's why I said if you have a lot of power and influence, then you should always use it properly. Okay. Then the last thing, Shankha, Chakra, Gada, Padma. Padma is lotus. So you'll always see Lord Vishnu, he is with a lotus. Okay. So what is this lotus? Lotus has many meanings. Lotus itself is a class on Vishnu's Asanam. Okay. So, <clears throat> so this lotus is very crucial because one of the most important significations of this lotus is uh, forgiveness. Okay. Lotus represents all the good things, you know, it's like beauty, it's like uh, peace, patience, all the 26 divine qualities which the Bhagavad Gita says uh, that a great soul possesses, all these things are represented by the Lotus, okay. So that also shows that one who... Uh, one who chants the chants this Vishnu Sasanam every day, their all auspiciousness, all the divine qualities will manifest because in Srimad Bhagavatam there's a sloka which says Vasudeve Bhagavati Bhaktir Akinchana Sarvai Gunais Tatta Samasate Sura Harava Bhaktasya Kuto Mahadgunan Manorathe Nasati Dhavato Bahi that one who is fixed in worship to Lord Vasudev, to Lord Vishnu. Sarvaid Gunais Tatta Samasate Sura, all the beautiful qualities of the Devatas, humility, tolerance, forgiveness, respectfulness, truthfulness, honesty, clarity, all the good qualities which human beings are seriously lacking in today's world because they have gone away from the teachings of the scriptures. All these qualities will manifest. Okay. And lotus especially represents uh, beauty. Beauty means not that rajasic beauty of these movies and TV stars, but 
it's sattvic beauty which means that which when you see you feel very happy you feel satisfied okay no it is not that type of a beauty which you see and you get agitated and you feel like oh i want to enjoy this person or this object you know, or i want to uh, just uh, be with that thing uh, it, it's like uh, when you feel you when you see you feel completely satisfied okay so generally uh, they have anything beautiful in the scriptures is compared to a lotus okay so so for example uh, when it comes to lord vishnu they always say he has lotus eyes lotus like eyes now does it does it mean that he has two lotuses no it's not like that it means that his eyes are very 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 beautiful okay his eyes are like the lotus lotus so that is why one of the names he has is pundari kakchaya all right pundari kakchaya means one whose eyes are like uh, the lotus very beautiful eyes and then he it is also said lotus face so his face is like the lotus then it is said his uh, lotus feet so that means his feet are also very beautiful so they are also compared to the lotus okay so therefore uh, this lotus signifies all auspiciousness all good things in life uh, it signifies beauty prosperity intelligence all the good things in life all right so therefore uh, anybody who uh, recites this vishnu sahasranam every day all these four things will eternally reside with this person okay so shankha chakra gada padma so what will the shankha do the shankha will remove all inauspiciousness okay and bestow all knowledge clarity the person will have sharp thinking he will be very clear in what to do in life hmm? then he will have the power of the sudarshan chakra he will be greatly empowered to do things which no normal human being can do especially yudhishthir maharaj dhruva maharaj ambarish maharaj prithu maharaj these personalities are all over the place you know bhishma pitama also then the gada the mace that will protect you from all difficulties and challenges and you will also be able to give protection to others you will be able to give assurance to others that yes you will be protecting them you will be saving them all right and finally the lotus will award all auspiciousness it will bestow all good qualities which a human being should have okay so therefore it is very crucial that we recite the vishnu sahasranam every day and i think time is up <laughs> all right so prasanna varanam dhyayet sarva vigno pashantayet all right so this says i meditate upon your ever smiling face and pray that remove all the obstacles which i encounter on my path okay prasanna varanam dhyayet means he is always prasanna prasanna means he is always happy you will never see uh, lord vishnu he is sometimes morose or he is like oh, what will happen like terrible you will never find him uh, saying like this okay so uh, therefore uh, anybody who recites the vishnu sahasranam he will also become like lord vishnu which means he will also become very happy he will always be happy cheerful you will never see him uh, crying or getting morose okay so therefore uh, this first invocation is very important because it tells you how lord vishnu looks what kind of a uh, what what are the things that he is wearing well there are more things which we can uh, which we will encounter later like uh, shri vatsa then uh, kostum mani is there all right these things are also there in his body so we will encounter these things later but uh this is uh, shuklam varadaram vishnu shashi varnam chatur bhujam for uh, he looks like the moon his color is like the moon and uh, he has four hands and uh, he has these four things shankha chakra gada padma and what these things represent and why he is ever peaceful because he has no problem he has no enemies <laughs> all right sarvo um, and then uh, remover of all obstacles okay so one who uh, recites the vishnu sahasranam uh, lord vishnu will always protect him and remove all the obstacles from his path all right so 
we will discuss the next shlokas later vyasam vashishtham avtaram shaktai potram kalmasham parashalatmajam vande shukatatam tapo nidhim this is referring to maharishi vyas okay so we will discuss the meaning of this later and hopefully we will complete the vishnu sahasranam in this lifetime all right thank you very much for your patience and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation me from me regarding your horoscope you can go to the website down in the description section all right what is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him